Hello everybody and welcome back to Rain and Pause. I'm Mitch and today I am going to be putting resin and embellishments onto these tiles. So I've had these tiles uh, sitting around for a very long time and the reason I haven't done anything to them is because I am not happy with them. Uh, so the idea behind these was to create a marble effect with the tile and I thought I could do that by drizzling some TLPs through the black and I believe the TLPs that I used were s'mores, ore and sterling and they didn't quite go to plan so instead of having nice striations I've got these really weird squiggly whatever they are and like I said not happy with them so I'm going to try embellishing them. Uh, first thing I'm going to do with these is I'm going to give them a bit of a wipe down with isopropyl alcohol. These have sat for maybe six months I think. Um, I don't even I think I recorded painting these because it was just a, a trial. Um, so all I did with these was pour a black pillow paint and I drizzled the respective paints over the tops. Pretty self-explanatory I would say and uh, yeah you get this result. Uh, so I did play with different techniques of you know starting from the center and drizzling out. I played with uh, using some tools to uh, put the paint down and drag it through and just didn't work out the way that I had planned. So instead of leaving these plain I'm actually going to use them and make something that I hope will be really pretty. Now I'm going to move my overhead light up here. Hopefully it's not in the way of the camera. There we go and I'm going to turn it down just a little bit so that it's not so bright but so that we can see what we're doing here. Okay so uh, to embellish these I'm going to use some Win Modern Art powders and these uh, were given to me by Helen Oakland so thank you very much Helen um, as a sample to try these out. So the ones that she's given me are 24 karat uh, rusted olive and rose gold. So I don't know where you would find these um, or if that's just her abbreviated names or if they're the actual names of the powders um, uh, you would get these from winmodernart.com I believe and I'm going to add these directly to some little cups uh, that I'm going to fill with resin and then put the powders in there. So I'm going to move this up for the moment out of the way and I'm going to add the powders to each cup first so that I'm not getting resin over everything when I mix that up. So the first uh, powder I'm going to add is 24K, 24 karat I guess, and I'm going to add quite a bit because I want this to be really uh, saturated I guess. Now these powders are incredibly fine so if you're using them I would recommend wearing a respirator. Um, and in saying that they are powders, they are advertised as powders but I would be remiss in saying that they are not powder they are very very super fine glitter so I would say they are like a 0.1 micron glitter or something because when you look at them you can very clearly see that they are cut out um, punched circles and not a fine mica powder they're not like little particles you can see that they are actually punched out with a laser or something like that so that's the first thing they're still gorgeous they're still beautiful um, but not sure if I can focus on this. Let's see. You can see those little dots. A powder would coat the entire inside of the bag. Is that going to focus as close? Maybe not. But yeah, you can see that those are little tiny dots. And I can see with my eye that they are indeed circular. So that's just my first little observation. It's more of a glitter than a powder, which is no biggie. It's still going to look amazing in your artwork. And the colours that Victoria has are stunning as well. She has a massive range. So I'm going to add these to my resin. And I'm going to be working with Stone Coat Countertop Resin uh, Epoxy because that's what I love to use. And I'll show you that in a second. So this is the one that I prefer, Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. And it just says that, stone coat, epoxy, heat resistant. This is the one you want. You don't want the art coat. You don't want any of the other coats. You just want stone coat epoxy. 
Now I do have a cup here that I've been using for resin this afternoon. I'm going to very quickly mix up my epoxy and I'm going to apply two layers of gloves and I'm going to work out how much epoxy I'm going to need for my eight tiles. So normally when I am working with 24 tiles, I'll mix up 200 milliliters of resin. Because I only have eight, I'm going to divide that by three. Um, so that's 24 divided by three. And I'm going to end up with about what, 75 mils of resin, 70 mils of resin. So because I need 70 mils total, I only need 35 milliliters of each part. So I'm going to be very meticulous in measuring this out. And just to save hassle, I'm going to measure 40 mils of each part and just make it 80 milliliters. I feel like that's going to be the easiest thing to do in this situation rather than trying to get in between lines and measure out five milliliters. Okay, now I should advise that when you're using resin of any kind, you should be wearing a respirator and proper safety equipment. I'm always wearing an apron and gloves when I'm working with resin. However, when I'm filming videos, I generally don't wear the respirator as it's only a short amount of time that I'm working with it. And it becomes difficult to hear if I have the respirator on. So now I've got my resin mixed up, uh, weighed out. I've got 80 mils in there. I am going to mix this up and then mix in the remaining powder. But before I do that, I'm going to add the teeniest, tiniest amount of a silvery white glitter. This is a glitter I got from Artisu, and it's actually a resin pigment, and this one is called Sparkle. Uh, this brand is no longer around, so if you can find it, that's amazing, um, but you may not be able to find it because it's now been discontinued. So all I'm going to do with this is stir my resin, and I'm gonna do this carefully because I have a smaller amount. Um, it is prone to bubbles. So I'm going to gently stir this, and normally I would set a timer for three minutes if I'm mixing up a full 200 mils. But because I'm only mixing a small amount, I'm going to judge it by eye. And the way that you'll know when your resin is mixed is if there are no strands of unmixed resin floating around when you look through the side of the cup. And you'll know what the strands are because they'll look like pale white um, wisps in the clear, otherwise clear resin. And the reason you want to go slow when mixing small amounts is because you will introduce a lot of bubbles. And I've only mixed up 80 milliliters because I'm going to go very sparse on the clear coat. And then I'm going to add little trails of the colored resin with the wind glitters. So I think that's pretty mixed up. I can't see any wisps and I've been scraping the sides down, scraping my stir stick to get any of that resin off. And now I'm going to measure out just a little bit into each cup. And then I'm going to dish it out onto my tiles. Again, going easy on the clear coat because when I add the powders next, that's going to add to the volume, the total volume that is on the tiles. So now I'm going to just move this light out of the way slightly. Now I'm going to use the end of my Fluid Art Co mixing stick to just stir up these glittery powders. And they look stunning. Very nice. Get in there. And then I'm going to drizzle these over the top once I mix the, or once I lay the resin flat and use my heat gun because once these are drizzled on, I want them to stay as nice to find lines and not to blend in too much. That may be a bigger ask than <laughs> I'm prepared for, I think we're going to see. All right, so I'm just going to move these off to the side, bring my tiles in closer, and I will zoom out just a touch so you can see what's happening. Okay, so when I am picking up my tiles, I use my middle finger to 
spread the resin. Go just over the surface like that, all the way to the edges. And covering all of the sides. And there we go, that tile is now completely covered and what I'm doing is tilting it in the light to make sure that I've covered the entire surface. Move on to the next one. And what I'm doing with these as I'm covering them is I'm holding them over another tile and that way any resin drips are going to go onto the tile and not be wasted on the silicon mat. So remember, we only mixed up 80 milliliters of resin total and we're going to cover eight tiles plus we've got some in our little containers. Okay, just working our way through this and you just want to feel with your finger where the resin is going. If there's no resin in a certain spot, your finger will sort of get stuck as it uh, snags the paint. And if it does that, you know you need to apply resin in that particular spot. And remember that resin will not flow where resin hasn't been previously. So you always want to make sure you're covering the entire tile. And when you're working with a black, like a plain black base like this, it's very easy to see your missed spots because they'll show up in the light straight away. Even a, such a simple colour scheme like this with the TLP pigments, it's beautiful. Like they really shine under resin, especially when they're the only things on there. Um, but we're going to make them hopefully look a little bit better with some uh, extra glitter and sparkle. Like I said, the, this was just gold and silver on some of them. I've got some um, s'mores on one of them, which is a nice deep brown. I think it could be s'mores or it could be cappuccino. It's one of the little piggy brown colours. Okay, so those are covered. Now I'm going to take off my top layer of gloves. And this is why I use two layers of gloves so that I can remove the top one without getting the bottom ones dirty. And so that no resin is going to touch my skin. Now I'm going to use my heat gun on the high setting on the highest speed to pop any bubbles. That's going to get rid of most of them. And then I'm going to use my heat gun or my, my chef's torch to pop any of the smaller ones. So this double step process is crucial to getting a perfectly smooth finish and I've never had an issue with bubbles since I've been doing this. Now for the fun part we're going to use our Win Lux Modern Art glitters to add some lines of colour to this. Hopefully make them look a little bit nicer. Now it is important to note that if you are embellishing your artworks with anything like these glitters and you intend to use them for food preparation purposes while the resin may be non-toxic and food safe, as soon as you add a glitter or a powder to them, they do not become so. So I always take that into account. So if I was to use these for food preparation or serving, for example, like a cheese board, um, I would be sure to add another coat of resin on top of this to seal in any of the powder. Just using the end of the 
just stick to get in there and spread that around. And I'm going to go in with the rusted olive. This is a really nice color. So what I've noticed is the rusted olive doesn't have a full on shimmery effect like the gold does. It's not as uh, opaque, I should say. So it's just a little bit of a different effect. It's more transparent. I'm going to try and layer these side by side. To get the full effect out of them. I'm actually really liking how these are turning out so I don't know if you can see them up on the camera there but they are really looking quite nice And lastly, we've got the rose gold. Now the rose gold looks like it's more saturated. And it could just be the amount that I added to each container as well. Hoping I have a little bit of uh, resin left because there are some spaces that I want to fill with negative space. So let's take a little bit of clear resin now and go in between. Hopefully that's going to push out the areas that I want the negative space in. I think I want a little bit more gold on this one. Get a little bit more of this extra resin. really pump that 24 karat gold into there because that's a really standout color I think Now I'm just drawing it in with the end of the skewer, or the spatula, stir stick, whatever you want to call it. And there is plenty of glitter and sparkle to be had here. Now I'm just going to use my chef's torch to pop any bubbles. And we're going to let these cure, I think. Put these onto my drying rack we'll let these cure and we'll come back and see how they look tomorrow hello everybody welcome back it's now been 24 hours and my coasters are finished and i gotta say i think the um 
little powders, add a little bit of something something to these otherwise not so <laughs> cool coasters. So let's go through them and have a look. So the first thing I do when I'm done with my uh, coasters is I always lift them up and make sure that there are no blemishes on them. And by blemishes, I mean I can tilt them side to side in the light and see that there are no lumps or bumps in the edges, especially around the edges. And they all look pretty good. So a quick way to do it is to tilt your head along the side and go from a side down angle and have a look at each coaster. And they're all pretty good. So to remove the tape on the back, I just use my sharp bladed craft knife. And I, I prefer the long bladed ones. And I just remove the tape nice and quick and easy. Peel that off and there it is ready to go. So let me show you this close up. Super lovely and sparkly that is. So you can see all of that glitter shifting and changing in the light. So we've got that white Artisu resin pigment and this is a perfect example of why I don't think the wind products can be classified as powders. They're very clearly a glitter considering the resin pigment right next to it. Look how much finer those particles are. Let me see if I can get even closer to see if I can illustrate this. That's about as close as I can get. But you can definitely see that the wind particles are much larger than the tiny, tiny particles of the resin pigment next to it. And even more so, the pigment uh, TLP pigments underneath are so smooth and fine. Look, they are like one solid color in the paint underneath. So this is a great way to mix glitters, pigments, micas, powders, and get some really cool depth and dimension in your artworks. And they all work together to bring really nice shimmer and shine to your pieces. So once again, guys, if you like what I'm doing here, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.